Regardless of who replaces Angela Merkel as the German Chancellor, the country's foreign policy and geopolitical orientation will remain unchanged. Germany will not leave NATO and the European Union. It will not withdraw from the Eurozone. The American troops will stay in Germany and Berlin will remain inferior to the United States as well as to Great Britain to a certain extent. I'm your host Kasim and thanks for joining me for another KJ vid. In this video we will discuss the future of Germany after Angela Merkel. But just before we begin, this video has been sponsored by Nippy Brands. Nippybrands.com is a brand new design service which provides bespokely made unlimited social media designs for a flat monthly fee. Whatever your design needs are, including logos, thumbnails, social media ads and more, Nippy Brands will design it for you at an incredible value for money subscription plan that you can cancel anytime. We have been using Nippy Brands to make our thumbnails and content for our Facebook page which is going really well and we highly recommend it. Please check it out on nippybrands.com and use the coupon code in the description for a £50 discount. After the end of the Second World War, Germany ceased to be an important player in the global political arena. The country lost almost a third of its pre-war territory but more importantly it completely lost its sovereignty. The Federal Republic of Germany might have a powerful economy but politically it is very dependent on Washington. In 2017, the then German Foreign Minister Sigmar Gabriel said that Angela Merkel and her Christian Democratic Union of Germany subordinated themselves to the militaristic policies of Donald Trump. The US President has demanded that the America's NATO partners raise the defence spending to the organisation's guideline of 2% of gross domestic product. In May this year, Germany announced that it will raise defence spending. Although Berlin contributes to the alliance in many important ways, the country devotes just about 1.26% of gross domestic product to military spending. The increase would amount to 1.35% of GDP, still a long way off the 2% target NATO members have set themselves. However, the increase would be the biggest for Germany since the end of the Cold War in 1991. At the same time, this move is showing that Germany still has to make serious concessions to Washington as it did for the past decades. In 2013, Alice Wiedel of the Alternative for Germany political party reportedly wrote that Chancellor Angela Merkel and her government are nothing other than puppets of the Allied powers. The Alternative for Germany, on the other hand, is accused of being on the Kremlin payroll and the German mainstream media constantly portray her organisation as a far-right party. In reality, the party leaders can be described merely as reactionaries with no clear perception of the future of Germany and with no new ideas. They know quite well what they oppose, but they lack an overall vision of a German society. Many analysts and politicians in the Balkans accuse Germany of being a colonial power in this part of Europe. Although Berlin has a strong economic and to a certain degree political influence in the Balkans, Washington is the one who is actually pulling the strings, not just in southeastern Europe, but throughout the continent. During the violent protests in Kyiv's Maiden Square in 2014, which resulted in the overthrowing of the Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych, foreign ministers of Germany and Poland, Frank-Walter Steinmeier, Radislaw Sikorsky, and head of the Department for Continental Europe of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the French Republic, Eric Fournier, tried to mediate in order to resolve the crisis. At the same time, Victoria Newland, the then Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs at the US Department of State, played a major role behind the scenes. In a leaked conversation between Newland and Jeffrey Yatt, the US Ambassador in Kyiv, the two officials discussed possible nominations of opposition leaders to form a new government. In the recording, Newland is heard saying, fuck the EU, and the US Ambassador answers, exactly. Angela Merkel described those remarks as totally unacceptable, but the events in Maiden clearly showed who was in charge in Ukraine. In the south of Europe, Germany is believed to have total economic control over Greece. 
Many analysts think that Berlin turned the Balkan and Mediterranean countries into its colony. Since Germany turns out to be a major beneficiary of Greece's debt crisis as it earned a total of 2.9 billion euros between 2010 and 2017. Still, Greece is heavily dependent not only on Germany but on the international monetary fund dominated by Washington. As the United States has unique veto powers over major policy decisions of the IMF. Germany plays an important role in the former Yugoslav republics. Its economic influence is visible in most Balkan countries. At the same time, Berlin is trying to take a political initiative as well, but it is overshadowed by the US dominance. Still, some researchers argue that Germany played a crucial role in the early 1990s when Berlin pushed for early recognition of Croatia and Slovenia in December 1991, which resulted in the bloody breakup of the Yugoslav Federation. Also, in 1999, Germany joined NATO aggression against Yugoslavia, which was the first German military campaign after 1945 in a region that suffered so much under German occupation during World War II. Today, many in the Balkans consider Germany to be one of the most influential geopolitical players, as it apparently holds the keys to the bright European future of the Balkan countries who are seeking to join the EU. Angela Merkel has officially been advocating the enlargement of the EU by formally inviting several ex-Yugoslav republics and Albania to start membership talks. After years of waiting to join the EU, many in the region draw the obvious conclusion that since it appears that the EU won't come to them, they will go north and west to Europe. Some argue that this may well be what is desired in Germany, which increasingly has to contend with labour shortages. The remaining population in the Balkans may keep working as cheap labour in German companies and former industrial giants that were sold to German corporations during the Mafia-style privatisation. Apart from that, Germany is among the top three export destinations for Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Montenegro, Macedonia and Albania and is one of the top European investors in the region, making Berlin the most important EU partner for the Balkan states. By maintaining a close relationship with these countries, Berlin may be sending a message that it is still a powerful European nation and has an interest in Eastern Europe's future. The days of Angela Merkel as a political figure are numbered. Berlin's political strategists are already preparing for what comes next. Whoever becomes a new German Chancellor will unlikely make any radical changes. None of the mainstream politicians are showing the will to resolve crucial issues the country has been facing for decades. Germany's identity debate has percolated for years as the country has struggled to come to terms with the parallel challenges posed by immigration and an ageing society. The discussion however has largely taken place outside German's political mainstream. It is unlikely that Merkel's successor will end the uncontrolled immigration which threatens to radically transform German society. Until these questions are resolved, the approval ratings of populist and anti-Islam groups will continue to grow, but it will unlikely affect the country's domestic and foreign policy. A future Chancellor is expected to keep the status quo in Germany's relations with Washington, which means that the country will effectively continue to be influenced by the US. The US on the other hand might decrease its military presence in Germany, but it will step up its efforts to influence Berlin with soft power. That's all for today guys, thanks for watching another KJ vid. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, especially if you are from Germany. Please don't forget to subscribe to our website kjvids.co.uk and benefit from our wide range of geopolitical analysis, the full transcripts of these reports and much more. Thanks for watching again and see you next time.